On behalf of the MGM Resorts family, I'd like to welcome the media, the fighters, and our partners at UFC to MGM Grand as we anticipate another exciting championship event this weekend. The UFC 167 main event promises to be a tremendous battle as the welterweight king of the world, George St. Pierre, faces off against the number one contender, Johnny Hendricks. We know the fans are especially excited about the, uh, this fight because it marks the return of George St. Pierre to the United States for the first time in more than three and a half years. Saturday night will also be a special evening as our partners at UFC will be celebrating their 20th anniversary in the industry. MGM Resorts would like to congratulate Dana and his entire team for running a spectacular promotion over the last couple of months in North America and internationally. I'd like to extend a special thanks to Frank and Lorenzo Fertitta and Dana for always bringing great events to our properties I'd also like to thank uh, Keith Kaiser of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And once again, I'd like, like to thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you Saturday night. And now I'd like to introduce Dana White. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? We appreciate you coming out this afternoon. We are winding down the end of the year here. It has been an unbelievable uh, end of the year for us. Sick fights, stack cards, all the cards have lived up to the hype, and uh, I'm assuming this one will too. Who has the first question? Raise your hand and they'll bring a microphone. Hi, guys. Congratulations on the 20 years, Dana. Thank you. Um, Chill, you know, a lot of people assume that you haven't been training for this fight as hard as you usually are, but I know for a fact that you're a guy that finds a workout whenever and wherever you can, but could you just talk to, to that a little bit and let us know if there's been any pleasant surprises you found training with people on the road or any sort of, um, you know, just new things that you learned not having the usual camp? Well, I'm not completely focused on this fight, but I, I've never completely focused on any fight. I've been training for this specific match since I was nine years old. Uh, the, the, when I very first got into this sport, I always thought, well, what's going to happen if I have to face another wrestler? And that's the whole reason you know, I learned to do other things. But I'm not focused on it. Mean, there's reasons that, that Miles Davis has more expected of him than some trumpet player in a wedding band somewhere. Great people do great things. I'm going to be busy on Saturday night. If I have it my way, I'll commentate the undercard. I might even send some text messages in between rounds. Awesome. Thank you. If, if I could ask you, Rashad, um, before you fought Little Nog, you talked about having some time off and you found a renewed interest for the sport. And then when you fought him, you admit that you didn't fight to your best. I'm curious now if, you know, the... Black Zillions are doing better. Vitor has found the new sort of love for the game. If, if that's kind of rubbed off on you at all, or, you know, if you yourself are feeling more invigorated once again. Yes, definitely. When you're training with a guy like Vitor and the guys I train with at the camp, uh, you can't help but feel the energy. Every single time you go to practice and, you know, you, you got to fight in practice. You know, you got these guys that are not just trying to uh, have a great practice, but they're trying to, to dominate you and beat you. And if you don't rise to occasion, then you'll get, uh, you get beat up. But when you said before that you were fired up and then you admitted you didn't, you didn't feel it for a little knock. So how, how do we know for, for real this time? I guess you really never know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you only know until it's fight time. You know, you can feel a certain way going to the fight, but on fight night, uh, everything is different. You know, you can't really predict how you're going to feel from one moment to the next. You know, I can't ask you how you're going to feel in five minutes from now because you don't know. You know, you just got to go with the moment. You got to go with how you feel. And as of right now, I feel great and hopefully it'll carry over until Saturday. Great, thank you. And, and lastly for you, Robbie, um, have you felt a new invigoration kind of keeping on that theme, fighting in the UFC, you, you come out, two big knockouts. You know, in Strike Force, you were kind of up and down a little bit more, but it seems already that you've got a, a better consistency. Yeah, American top teams getting me ready, but uh, just fighting in the UFC and being excited to come and work and wake up every day excited that I have a fight in 10 weeks or whatever, and it's just, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Hey guys, Ron Kruk with Inside MMA. Dana, uh, for those of us who have covered this sport for a long time, this is a very exciting time for us too, seeing the 20th uh, year anniversary. For you, I know Vegas and the MGM are really 
the home of the UFC, but was there any thoughts about possibly, you know, going back to Denver where it all began or maybe even doing a stadium show like you did in Toronto for this event? No. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we, uh, you know, as we lay out the schedule for the year, um, it just made sense to, to, to go back to back. George St. Pierre hasn't been in Las Vegas in a long time. Uh, you know, he's been fighting up in Canada and, you know, he fought here a lot in the beginning of his career. He fought in Las Vegas a lot. And, and, and you know, even if you're Canadian, all, all of Canada loves George St. Pierre. <clears throat> and uh, it doesn't suck to come to Vegas, especially this time of year. So, No, it doesn't. Uh, beautiful day today for sure. Can you tell us a few of the uh, people that you've invited? I know that you're really reaching out to those pioneers who started the sport and, and some of the guys that really uh, created the UFC as well. Could you give us some uh, details on that? Yeah, you know, you know our guys the, 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 that are active in the UFC now, you know, we're putting on fights, it seems like three times a month now. And, you know, they've been to all the big fights. They've done things. For, for any of you that have seen the documentary, I think that, I like that the guys who started this thing, they, they've always come off as like the bad guys. They're not the bad guys. If it wasn't for those guys, we wouldn't be where we are today. And uh, uh, this, 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 this show is to celebrate them. You know, I've really put together some, some amazing stuff for them uh, this weekend. I think that we're going to blow their mind. They're going to have uh, the best time they've ever thought they could have at a UFC event. So they can come in, enjoy this 20-year anniversary, and kind of just look around and... and, and Although they didn't know it at the time, look around and see what they created. A yeah. uh, question for Dana. Uh, ben Baudouin from uh, RDS in Montreal. Uh, Dana, uh, George uh, took part in uh, some of the biggest events in recent history of the UFC. UFC 100, UFC 129 in Toronto. Is there, is there a reason why you chose him to headline this card for this 20th anniversary? Yeah, well, first of all, he fell on this date. It, it, it worked out that way. But there's no doubt about it. I've said it forever. He's the pay-per-view king. Nobody sells more pay-per-views than George St. Pierre does. So um, <clears throat> we just got lucky that he landed on the 20-year anniversary. Is he kind of a, a symbol of what you try to achieve as an organization, like to be uh, mainstream? He's pretty mainstream uh, as a fighter. Is he symbolizing the old UFC that you try to trying to become? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, there's been an evolution in, in the UFC. Uh, you know, not only since the early days, but since we've we bought it. You know, the only thing that I can say about George St. Pierre, and I say it about him all the time, you couldn't ask for a more perfect champion. You couldn't ask for a for a guy who works harder. You couldn't guy ask for a guy who represents the brand better, who represents the belt better, who represents his country better. Um, he, he's an absolute professional and perfectionist at everything he does, and uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure working with him throughout the years. And I, you know, with all the, the stuff that's been being said this week, I hope we're going to continue to work with him for many years to come. Speaking of that, do you, do you fear he's going to retire in the cage uh, this year? He's Saturday? not retiring. That's, that's <laughs> bullshit. Uh, question in French for George. Um, George, hier, um, dans son scrum, uh, Johnny Hendricks a uh, accusé, entre guillemets, de dopage. Il a dit, si vous le regardez, il est beaucoup plus petit qu'il était avant. Donc, il a fait référence au fait que tu aurais peut-être arrêté de prendre des stéroïdes en prévision de ce combat-là. Qu'est-ce que tu as à répondre à ça? Est-ce que tu es plus petit que tu étais? Euh, non, je suis, je suis le même poids que j'étais. Et puis, euh, ben en fait, je peux le conseiller. J'ai euh, une application. Puis j'ai aussi. Euh, on, des, je suis un, tu sais, à temps partiel, je suis un petit peu comme un fitness guru des fois. J'ai euh, TouchFit. C'est une application sur le sur les, les iPhone. Puis on peut aller voir aussi euh, RushFit. Ça peut l'aider peut-être à garder la forme tout le long de l'année. Ça pourrait être bon. Merci, Jean. We missed that one. I was off my game and didn't get the translator for that one. Chael was sleeping or he would have translated it for us. Yeah. Uh, Richard Hunter, CBS Radio. Question for George St. Pierre. Uh, George, between uh, takedown defense and striking defense, you're the most accomplished defensive fighter in welterweight history. Do you think with all the talk of Johnny Hendricks' offensive attack that that's an element of your skill set that's being overlooked in this fight? 
Uh, I'm sorry, uh, where are right you? Here. Right here. Oh, okay, sorry. I like to, to look at someone when I, when I speak. Uh, no, uh, he's, he's uh, the number one contender for a reason. He posed a big, big threat to me. And I'm, I'm in the best shape of my life. And I, like you say in English, I, I left no stone unturned. And I'm physically, mentally on top of my, on top of, uh, on top that I, better than I ever been. So by doing this, and my confidence is very high, and even though he's posing a lot of threat, I I'm confident I'm gonna win the fight. Question. Question for uh, Chael Sonnen. Chael, you're in the unusual position of knowing who your next couple of opponents are gonna be. Some fighters would find that a distraction, but you're the master of promotion. Do you find it handy that you can multitask and promote a couple of fights at the same time? Uh, I like to know what's going on. Uh, yeah, I think that it's, it's very nice. I'm a wrestler. I come from a tournament background. We take on four or five guys in one day, and uh, we never know who it is. If I have any, any frustration in this sport, it's that we only get three fights a year. I, I wish that we could uh, fight a lot more times. So, uh, you know, I'm happy about that. But, uh, but before everything, I'm a fan first, man. This is, this is 20 years. The only thing bigger than this is Vanilly Silva's forehead. I cannot wait. <laughs> Until Saturday night, the true welterweight championship is on the line. In every division, including mine, we've got five guys that are arguing they're the number one contender. Every 170-pounder alive has stepped aside and said, Johnny Hendricks, come on through. This is so rare that you have the two best guys, unarguably, fighting for the title. And lastly, for Robbie Lawler. Uh, Robbie, uh, Roy McDonald said in his last fight he thought that Jake Ellenberger was hesitant to engage, and that's what made it kind of a lackluster fight. Do you see any scenario Saturday night in which you fight that cautiously? No, I don't really fight that way. I'm coming to fight. I'm sure Roy's coming to fight, and we're going to meet in the center of the octagon, and we're going to get it on, plain and simple. Dana, to your right. <clears throat> um, I know you guys are going to start working on your uh, next five-year plan pretty soon, which will take you to the uh, 25th anniversary, which is arguably a lot bigger than the 20th. Uh, can you give us, can you kind of tease some things about what you guys might have planned over the next five years and what you might do for the 25-year anniversary? <laughs> I'm definitely not thinking about the 25-year anniversary, but uh, yeah, we, we've got one thing that, you know, you, you can... Any of our detractors can say whatever they want about us. What they can't say is that we haven't raised the bar every year and, and continued to, to take the sport to another level and, and this uh, company and the things that we have planned over the next five years. I obviously can't tell you what we're working on, but um, we're, we're going to... I'd say the things that we come out with in the next two years, people will be going, wow, they did it again. Um, and a lot of it has to do with... Uh, with, with our, our global plans and things that we're working on here locally with Fox. Uh, hello, my first question is for you, Dana. How pivotal do you see the welterweight battle between Robbie Lawler and Roy McDonald? I love this fight. Um, I love this fight because uh, th these guys are both, you know, in that position right now. And, you know, I know that Rory took a lot of heat for his last fight with Ellenberger. This is the perfect fight for both of these guys. Like Robbie Lawler just said, which I agree 100%, Robbie Lawler doesn't fight that way. He's going to come after Rory, and, uh, and, and both guys are going to perform. And I, I, I predict that being one of the best fights of the night. It's tough. You know, when you talk about what fight of the night could be, we do it every time we have a fight. It's tough. I mean, just look at the dais here, you know, of, of the fights that are happening. Uh, and... There's so many more on the card. So I, I expect a great night, but I expect that to be an unbelievable fight, which is the perfect timing for both of these guys, no matter who wins. This is a big fight for both of these fighters. My next question is for Johnny. Uh, you did a lot of work at OSU ahead of this fight, your alma mater. I'm just curious to know, how much do you think that'll play a factor in getting George St. Pierre to the ground? Uh, who said I want to take him to the ground? You, know, you might want to. There you go. I want to keep it on the feet, you know. That's my uh, strongest thing is, you know, I want to keep the fans happy, knock him out. You know, that's my only goal. If I have to use my wrestling, it's going to keep it on the feet. Or if I have to win the round and steal the round, I'll, I can use it. You know, I've proven that I can use my wrestling to take people down. But I like to play to the fans. If they don't like what I'm doing, we'll put it back on the feet and go from there. And my last question is for Josh Koscheck. Uh, being that you were a part of the very first season of The Ultimate Fighter, and now you're coming up on a moment here where it's your 23rd fight with the UFC, how important is it for you to make an impact in this fight, being the history that you have with the organization? 
Well, um, back in when the Ultimate Fighter was, was first came out, I think there was probably maybe about five of you sitting out here. So, um, you know, now just take a look around and see what, this, what uh, you know, the partners with Fox and, and uh, the growth of the UFC. Um, back then, there was only maybe six to 12, you know, pay-per-views a year. And then they started the Ultimate Fight Nights. But, uh, you yeah, know, the sport, the sport has changed in, in the past, you know, five to ten years. It's, it's crazy to see, you know, um, as you guys can all see now, it's, you know, this place... There was no fans coming to, the, you know, the, the press conferences and, you know, the weigh-ins were, were pretty busy, but uh, not like they are now. So it, it's just a tremendous growth of, of how this sport has changed. And uh, for me, you know, uh, fighting uh, my 23rd time, you know, this is, a big, this is the biggest fight of my career. You know, I thought that, you know, oh, Ultimate Fighter might have been the biggest fights of my career, but no, this is, this is 10 times bigger than that. So I know what's, what's at stake here. Um, you know, I know that I've been around for a long time, and uh, you know, I've had some, uh, some good days and some bad days in this game, and, and that's part of uh, you know, being uh, you know, a mixed martial artist. Thank you. That was Josh's one fan. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. <laughs> Don't lie, Dana. You're, you're, my, you're my number two fan. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Koscheck. Um, another question for uh, Johnny Hendricks this time. Um, Johnny, we uh, learned uh, to know you when you were in Montreal the last two times. You're a very fun guy. Uh, but yesterday you had some pretty Irish comments against uh, George Champier. You, you said you can't wait to hurt him. Uh, is there, uh, and when we saw you previous times, you were like a gentleman to him, very nice. So is there a particular event that changed uh, the behavior uh, out of this fight? No, uh, I want to beat him, of course. You know, why am I taking this fight if I what, didn't want to beat him? You know, uh, now it's competitor versus competitor. You know, I'll be nice and friendly today, but my mind is to kill him, you know, not in that sense, but it's the beating, to de demolish him, you know. I want to win where he doesn't want to fight me again. You know, that's the way I go with every fight. Uh, this fight's no different than any other. Uh, he's, yeah, he's done a lot of things, but that doesn't matter. When he steps in the octagon with me, the, the past is the past. I plan on making a new future. But do, do, you, do you feel more anger toward George uh, now than you had last summer? No, no, man, I like the guy. You know, I like him. Uh, that's one thing that's nice about our sport. Yeah, you, you talk a little trash, but I like him. I respect him. He's done great things for the sport. I just think it's my turn. And uh, Dana, uh, this whole, uh, this whole anti-doping kind of controversy, do you feel it helped uh, hype the fight? or it, uh, the, the what? What, what did you say? The, the kind of uh, the doping controversy, the test that George takes. The, that Johnny doesn't take? Does it help to hype the fight or not? What did he say? Hey, anti, Wada and Vada. the anti-doping oh, oh, oh. thing. Hold on. Sorry. I said let's do Wada. Wada is way tougher than Vada, like we talked about yesterday. Yeah. The reason why I'm getting upset with you is we're at the 20th anniversary of the UFC. These guys up here, great fights, and you want to talk about a doping thing. Really? You know what I mean? Like, this is UFC. We, we get tested. We do all these things. I've never been busted by anything. I don't accuse GSP of anything. I just want us to put on the greatest fight that UFC's ever seen. That's it. <laughs> so... So here, here's the thing, you know, when these type of things happen, and this, this isn't the first time it's happened, this has happened in the past with other fighters saying, you know, oh, let's, let's, let's both do, agree to do this and that. It never works. So you're never going to have two guys who are competing against one another agree on, on the testing that they're going to do. That's why you have an athletic commission in place that comes in and regulates it and oversees it, <clears throat> you know. And, and when these kind of things happen and, and, and you start talking about, you know, two guys talking about testing and then they end up not doing it, then the whole thing becomes a, a talk about testing. And, and, and like he said, George St. Pierre has never tested positive for anything. Johnny Hendricks has never tested positive for anything. They've both never tested positive. You know, the, the thing has gotten uh, legs that it shouldn't have had because of, you know, how it started out and how these guys started debating it. That's why it's, it drives me crazy. We're regulated by the government. The government will test both of these athletes when they fight on Saturday night. Thank you, and sorry for my mm. English. <laughs> it's all good.
Hey, Josh, question for you. Um, and following up on your answer where you said things have changed for, you know, since you came into the UFC, obviously the things that Dana calls the bells and whistles and the press conferences and all that have changed. But what about with more at stake for you guys as athletes? Has that changed the fights in any way? I, th I think it has. You know, I mean, if, if you look at the last couple cards, you know, for example, the, you know, Diego Sanchez and Gilbert Melendez card, I think if, you know, uh, you know, there's a good chance that Diego could have been jobless after that if, if he didn't put on such a great fight, you know. So, um, you know, it's same with me, you know. Uh, my butt's on the line, you know, when it comes uh, Saturday night, you know. I mean, I, I my last performance wasn't great, and, you know, the one before that was, you know, okay. But, you know, uh, I, I – Got it. We got to come out and win. You got to. You, in in this sport right now, there's a lot of people that are waiting in the limbs to get into the UFC, and uh, the UFC knows that there's a lot of guys, uh, you know, that they have on roster, and you know, it's uh, there's always a lot at stake, you know, when it comes, you know, financial and, and winning and losing fights. So you know, uh, for a fighter, you you got to come out and you got to compete and you got to win. And uh, Rashad, uh, if if I might, I don't mean to break up the text there, right in front, <laughs> directly in front of you. Um, He's talking to his financial advisor right now. <laughs> I, I was just curious, you know, since you were on season two, you know, you were one of the pioneers of the Ultimate Fighter 2. Do you feel that same, you know, the pressure that has changed more is at stake as an athlete now uh, than when you first began? And does that change the way you look about your training and your preparation and just your overall fight game? Yeah, I mean, in, in, in most part because, you know, since then this has become more of a job for me. I mean, the fact that at that time when I was on Ultimate Fighter show, I didn't really know where this can go. But once I've been in the UFC, once I've had success in the UFC, uh, the pressure's on. You know, now I'm the guy to beat. Before I was trying to beat the guy, now I'm the guy to beat. So, you know, it, it's a lot of pressure for myself to go out there and compete at a high level, but it's also uh, pressure, you know, to, to stay in the organization. You know, it's not easy to be in the organization as long as I have been in, uh, especially the, the way it is. You know, this is the fight business, the fight business, in the entertainment business, it, it doesn't last long, and you got to maximize every opportunity you get. And um, you know, with that said, you know the pressure still, uh, you know, it, it can get to you, but it, you have to remember why you started, and you have to remember to at least have fun doing it. You know, yes, sir. Uh, um, the uh, National Football League has uh, many big problems with concussions. Hockey is having problems with uh, many kind of injuries. Uh, how does your sports compare with uh, other major sports? Yeah, well, obviously, if you look at our, uh, at our, uh, what happened to us last year, we had a lot of injuries last year. You know, we had literally every fight last year, the main event or co-main event falling off due to injuries. Uh, we, we've had some injuries this year. Uh, this is a contact sport. You know, when, when you train for, for one of these fights, a lot of these guys training camp is a lot tougher than the actual fight itself and uh so so there's always we're always going to have injuries it's a professional sport it's a, it's a it's a combat sport it's a contact sport and then as far as concussions go uh like what's happening in the nfl i'd say the difference between the past the nfl and the past not today you know they, they've obviously tightened things up now uh with, with concussions but when you get uh, a blow to the head here you're on medical suspension. You can't fight. You can't have any contact for 90 days. And then even after the 90 days, you have to see a doctor, and you have to be cleared by a doctor before you can uh, come back and compete. You know, we're, we're, we're very lucky that we have a, a huge roster with tons of talent and tons of stars. I'll give you an example. My favorite team, the New England Patriots, if they lose Brady, that's the season for them. Their season's done. You know, we don't take rest, uh, any, any type of risk with, with our athletes, and, and we're very uh, in front of uh, safety. I hope I answered all your questions. Hi, it's Karen again. I actually have a question for you, Ali. Um, we've seen uh, Habib Nurmagomedov and Hustam Habilov come over from Russia and do very well so far. I'm just curious if there's something that you think that you bring to the UFC. We've seen some amazing suplexes from them and just something that maybe Russian fighters are bringing to the UFC that we haven't seen yet, something different that we can look forward to seeing from you and, and more of your kind. Мы уже видели, как Рустам и Хабиб пришли в UFC, делали очень достаточно великие, интересные вещи, которые даже не, не наблюдались ранее. Как ты считаешь, ты можешь предоставить что-то, что, что раньше не было замечено в UFC? Спасибо за вопрос. 
В первую очередь хочу сказать, что у нас в Дагестане живут великие люди, и если мы куда-то за родную, за родину выезжаем выступать и стараемся делать все, на что способны, и показывать все, что, что можем делать. The wrestling school in Dagestan is actually one of the best in the world, and uh, being such a small country, we are incredibly patriotic about it, especially if we go abroad to represent it, you know, it's, uh, we, we get a great charge. Question for Dana over here. To your left. Right. Your left. Hey. Uh, hey. Prior to the uh, first Anderson Silva Chris Weidman fight, you said Anderson has done so much in this sport that if he loses, he'll get an immediate rematch. Does the same apply in this uh, main event? I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll see. Obviously, George St. Pierre has had the belt since 2007. Um, and then before that, he, he had had the belt before that, he lost to Matt Serra. So, you know, all fights are different. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how the thing plays out. I mean, I, it, it would be kind of a weird thing for George St. Pierre not to get another shot at the title. It'd be hard to, to say that he's still not probably the number one contender if he loses the belt on Saturday night. But we'll see what happens. Has he told you yet what his big plans are? He hasn't told me anything. I walked back here a few minutes ago before we came out. I saw him. I said, hello. That's his business. It's none of my business. And it's none of your business either. Well, actually... I actually think that is my business. <laughs> oh, um, you, might, you might be right. <laughs> uh, George, you want to tell us what your plans are? Is this the right time or not yet? Not yet? No. No. Will you do it on Saturday? <laughs> May, I don't know. Johnny, how about you? Would you want to give him an immediate rematch? Because Chris, that was a big thing that he was saying before the Anderson fight. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Uh, if I beat him once, it means I can do it again, right? So, yeah, for sure. And then uh, back to George. Some fighters uh, complain when their opponents have big beards. They say that they want, you know, to ask for them to shave. Hey, stay off the beard, I, I just want to... Stay off the beard. I know where you live. <laughs> I know where I you live. Wanna, do you have an issue? You haven't fought someone with a beard like that. I, I haven't think about it. I, uh, I don't know. I'm, no, I don't think so, no. Also, in the prime time, um, you, you were... You were very beat up, your face. You had a black eye, and you seemed to have a, an edge to you. In the interviews, even in the last scene when they were showing your eyes and kind of the, the stress that you were under, do you have more of an edge? Do you, do you have more pressure going into this fight? Have you put more pressure on yourself? No, the pressure is always there. But the reason why I had a, maybe a bruise or something is I, had a, I was sparring very hard when they came. At the prime time, I was like, a, I don't remember, like a few weeks away from the fight, and I had good sparring. And sometimes when you get hit, like you have a black eye, it comes after, you know, so, that, you know, it, it's the nature of the sport, so it happened. Okay, and a question for Tyron over here. Uh, last time we saw you, obviously, you suffered a loss. It seemed like maybe you weren't as aggressive as you have been in the past. Of course, your first fight in the UFC, you were very aggressive and it ended quickly. Looking back, can you pinpoint why you, you fell short in that fight against Jake? Uh, I think I just possess a lot of tools, a lot of gifts, and um, you know I have to use those gifts every time. And I think in that fight, um, he really didn't capitalize on anything, but I really didn't make him pay. You know, I made him miss, I kicked him to the ground, spinning back fist him, but I really didn't pounce on him. I really didn't make him pay. Um, good thing I like about this um, bout with Josh. Um, Josh always brings it every single fight, and he's always in great shape. And he's a guy that's going to force me to use the tools in my box. He's going to force me out of my comfort zone. I think that's when I fight the best. Okay, and then one last one for uh, Josh. Um, you mentioned, which is a pretty big statement, that this is the biggest fight of your career, especially considering the fact that you fought for the belt before and you've had some very big fights. And as far as the Ultimate Fighter One cast members, actively there are only three of you really fighting. Swick has been out for a bit. Um, why, why is this the biggest, though? Why is this bigger? Is it because you feel like you're, you're fighting for your job? And uh, if you can also answer, you recently pulled out of a fight. You've been uh, somewhat inactive lately. What, what, was, uh, what was bothering you? What was the injury that you suffered? I haven't been able to find out. And I'm not telling you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, nah, um, you, you know, when you train hard, injuries come, you know, and, and as, you know, you creep up there in age, uh, you have to adjust, adjust your training. And I, and I felt that, uh, you know, I was trying to train as hard as I was when I was 23, 24, 25 years old, you know. So um, for me, you know, I just uh, just – 
uh, had some little uh, injuries in my hand and, uh, you know, just, just couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't punch for a while. So, um, you know, but th this is a big fight, you know. Every fight in the UFC is a big fight, you know. Whether it's your first fight or it's your last fight, they're all huge, um, you know. And it's, it's, it's no longer you're fighting in front of, you know, uh, a couple thousand people, you know. You're fighting in front of millions in the whole world, you know. So, uh, you know, every fight's big. And, and this definitely is a big fight for me, and, and I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, Saturday. Saturday. I'm, I'm, I've trained hard, and I'm in great shape, and uh, I'm super excited about it. Thanks. Nancy Audet, TVA Sport. Question pour uh, Georges Saint-Pierre. Georges, quand tu as décidé de payer une agence pour uh, des contrôles antidopage, l'idée derrière ça semblait positive. As-tu l'impression maintenant qu'on tente un peu de tourner au ridicule ce que tu as tenté de faire? Et es-tu déçu de voir que tu ne sembles pas avoir le soutien de ton organisation dans cette tent tentative de, de rendre ton sport plus propre? Hold on a sec. Do we have a French translator? We didn't prepare for this? Yeah, they, they, they. Can you, can you answer in French and maybe He's after in English? Huh? Right, she asked me uh, if I'm disappointed the way uh, the whole uh, testing situation happened, if, uh, if uh, it turns to ridicule for me, if, if, I, if I'm disappointed and, and uh, how it turned out. Um, moi je, suis moi, je suis déçu, oui, parce que j'avais un accord euh, verbal qu'on était pour le faire. Puis euh, j'ai tenu mon accord et lui, il ne l'a pas fait. Je suis. Euh, j'ai rien à dire là-dessus, mais je suis déçu. Je voulais, je voulais faire en sorte que ce soit quelque chose de positif et pas quelque chose de négatif. I said yes, I'm disappointed. I wanted to do. I, I, my man of my word, I said I was going to do it and I did it. I'm disappointed that it turns out like it did. I wanted to do something positive. I've been accused in the past and I wanted to show everyone. That is possible to be champion and, and uh, without using drug and, and I wanted to make a statement, raise the bar. I didn't want to do anything negative by doing what I did. It was all positive, and I'm a little bit disappointed. It turned out the way it did. Yes. Nice. Thanks. Yeah. A uh, happy birthday, UFC. Happy 20th birthday. Um, question first of all <laughs> for, for Rashad Evans. Um, how difficult has it been, Rashad, switching from a man who's prepared to lick your boots on live television to uh, facing a man who's going to be punching you in the face on Saturday night? You know, and obviously you have been friends. How difficult has it been mentally? Um, you know, it's been a transition for me. You know, for the last 10 weeks, I've been kind of just putting him in that. That, that mental, uh, that, that compartment where I'm able to go and compete against them. But, you know, Chael's a hard yeah. guy to, to have those feelings for. You know, usually when you have a fight coming up, you kind of get those ill intentions. Uh, even if you, you, know, you don't have a problem with the guy, but you kind of help, you kind of need it a little bit. But uh, with Chael, it's just not like that. Um, you know, for me, it's just more of just want to go out there and, and have a good, uh, a good fight and want to go out there and prove to myself and prove to everybody else that I'm still the number one contender at, uh, at light heavyweight. And it gives you bragging rights on TV for a very yeah, long time. Yeah, I didn't want to say that, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's, exactly. what, that's, <laughs> that's the a real reason. That's, that's what we really fight for. Exactly. Um, and on, 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 the, on the, uh, the main event, obviously, um, I just um, wanted to ask, ask Josh. Um, obviously, you had uh, a very interesting fight with George um, because he employed the jab to such great effect against you. And, you know, statistically, as a seven inch reach advantage, over Johnny, that doesn't always mean everything in an MMA fight, but do you think, Josh, that his reach advantage will give George an advantage in this fight against Johnny? I've been saying, uh, you know, in all the interviews to everybody that, uh, you know, George St. Pierre comes into the fight, uh, very good game plan, in shape, uh, and he comes to fight. Um, I believe that uh, definitely George has a slight advantage on the feet with this this fight because of the fact that he's fast and he and he has a good jab. Um, you know, George is going to come in with his game plan, whatever it is, and he's going to stick to it. And uh, you know, I believe that uh, George St. Pierre is probably going to win this fight. Conversely to that, Johnny, when you fought Carlos Condit, he has a seven-inch reach advantage over you as well, but you seem to get in fine and land a lot of shots on Carlos. So how are you going to get in on the inside against George? Uh, same way that I did with Carlos, you know, throw heavy hands. You know, he's got to respect my power. If he doesn't, it's going to be a short night. And 
that's one thing that I'm going to use. And plus, I'm a wrestler. You know, I'm lower, I'm smaller than him. I'm shorter, but I'm bigger. You know what I mean? I'm going to step in the octagon around 200 pounds. Uh, he's not used to that. Um, and, you know, I'm going to use my power and my speed. And plus, you know, you saw in the Collars Con uh, fight, too, that I can take people down just as easy as he can. Um, and <clears throat> so we're going to see. You know, it's going to be a battle of wrestling. I know that. But I know I can use my hands to prevent that. Great main, uh, main card here, UFC. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Josh, uh, over to your right. Uh, Dave Dybert, Post Media News. Uh, along the lines of the 20th anniversary, uh, for all the talk of um, Stefan and Forrest and the impact that their finale fight has had on the company, your uh, rivalry with Chris Lieben uh, during that first season got a lot of people watching that ended up sticking around till the finale. What, looking back on it, made that such compelling TV with you and, and Bobby uh, as well, the three of you? Well, that, that TV show was pretty crazy, that's for sure. Um, there's probably a lot of stuff that they could probably go back and edit and put in there and, and make a whole new TV show. Um, you know, but uh, when you're young, you know, I guess you you a little bit more crazy. Um, and, you know, there was, a, there was a lot of craziness in that house. So, you know, it made for, it made for good TV. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, if you look at the, the fighters that came out of there, you know, there's a lot of good fighters. You know, people, we took a lot of heat in, in the beginning, you know, oh, these guys aren't fighters. They're just, you know, reality TV guys. And then, you know, two years later, you see, you know, guys went fighting for the title and, you know, uh, um, you know, Stephen Bar or um, Forrest Griffin was a champion, you know, Kenny Florian's fought for the title two or three times. So, you know, you, you, you got to think about that as an aspect of, you know, these guys were fighters in that house. And, uh, you know, I remember sitting in the, in the uh, Cox Pavilion watching uh, Stefan and them go at it. And, and uh, the, you know, for a small arena, that place was, that place was like 18,000 people. People were stomping their feet uh, the entire fight. It, it, was, it was electric in that, in that thing. And that, that really turned the UFC to, to a big mainstream. And, you know, you saw, like, just this sport, you know, a, a switch you know now we're a little bit more mainstream and people were coming up to you on the street and I mean it, it that fight definitely definitely changed things when when did you know that you were famous that you were no longer you know uh, Josh Kostick, I'm not sort of famous that, that, so, but that, yeah. that, that first moment where, you know, someone where you might not have been recognized before, you know, a store or just well, walking I, along the street. You, you just got to understand the power of television, you know what I mean? It, that's what brings all you guys here. You know, you guys all are here because of the fighters and in, in, in the UFCs, you know, uh, it, it's a it's a media storm. You know, I mean, there's there's so much media and there's so much TV and, and the sport has grown huge in the past, you know, 10 years since the Ultimate Fighter won. Um, you know, th this sport has changed big time, and, and you can see it from the fights all the way to the, the way the UFC manages it, how many shows they're putting on. I mean, this sport has, has come huge in the last, you know, 10 years, let alone, you know, over since the beginning whenever the first show was in Denver. Um, you know, so it, it's amazing to see, you know, transition and, and how, how much better the fighters are becoming. Um, years before, you saw, you know, back in the day, it was wrestler versus striker or striker versus, you know, grappler or... You know, now it's it's mixed martial artists versus mixed martial artists. You know, I mean, look at this main event, for example. Johnny Hendricks isn't just a wrestler. You know, he's had several knockouts. George St. Pierre isn't just a, a kickboxer. He can take guys down, you know. So, you know, it's fighter versus fighter, mixed martial artists versus mixed martial artists. And, and that's the great thing about this sport. And just like you said, a lot of... <laughs> A lot of emphasis goes on, uh, on, on Stefan and Forrest because, uh, you know, that was the fight that, that did it and launched everything. But we had the perfect cast at the perfect time. And, and uh, you know, that whole, I've been, it's funny because I've been talking about that a lot this week, the, the Koscheck, Lieben, Bobby Southworth thing, you know. And Bobby Southworth was as much of that first season. You know, he might not have gone on and, and might not still be in the UFC, but I called him last week and talked to him, you know. And, uh, you know, when that thing heated up, when that whole thing blew up with those three, that's when the, when the season peaked. It was like around episode five or six, and that thing peaked at like 2.2 million viewers with no advertising, no nothing. Um, and it was the perfect cast at the perfect time. And, and uh, 
It's, it's just amazing. But every guy that was on that show, from Diego Sanchez to Josh Koscheck to Bobby Southworth and, and the rest of them, all played a big role and a big part in where we are today. <clears throat> a quick question for Rory McDonald. Rory, uh, you've made it clear that you have no interest in fighting George St. Pierre, your friend and training partner. Uh, so with a win Saturday night, what are your thoughts? Would you consider moving to a different weight class? Give us a little idea on your future. Uh, not yet. I wouldn't move up just yet. Um, I don't know. I have no plans. I'm I just planning for Saturday. I want to knock out or submit Robbie and, uh, you know, hopefully project myself up the ranks and, you know, leave it up to the UFC and my management to figure it out. You're currently sitting at number four, so obviously if you were to win and George was to win, it, you're right there. I mean, if Dana offered you the, the title fight, you'd still turn it down? Yeah, I, I'm not fighting George. Okay. You guys let me worry about that one. <laughs> Very, well, I guess that leads to, you know, my question for maybe Chael and for Rashad. Uh, you know, Roy's not the first one to say this. Uh, you two, Rashad and Chael, obviously are friends. You work outside of the octagon together. When you hear other fighters say, listen, I'm not going to, to fight a friend or someone I train with, how do you respond to that? We'll start with Chael. We're, we're here to compete, and everybody's got to compete with everybody. And, uh, you know, when Dana asked me to, to fight, he, uh, he sent me a text message. He said, hey, I've got a fight for you. And I said, well, if it's a 205 and it's not Rashad, I'm in. Just, just count on it. And he writes me back, and he says, it is Rashad. And I'm sitting next to Rashad at the time, and I, we're on a commercial break, and I just hold up the phone. And uh, the whole rest of the show, every time I had to throw to Rashad, I could feel him sizing me up for the next... <laughs> for the next 30 minutes. But, but here's the reality. Rashad and I are veterans. We're also leaders in the back. We're leaders within the locker room. And we are not going to send a message to the guys in the UFC that it's okay uh, to pick and choose your fights. And uh, I don't think that's what's going to happen here. I'm not going to speak for Rory, of course, but I don't think that's what, uh, what's going to happen. I think when it's time to compete, that George is, as a, an idol that Rory looks up to, George is going to grab him and say, hey, man, you got to compete with me. Um, uh, <clears throat> Dana, well, to your left. Oh, wait, he didn't answer yet. Uh, well, well, to, uh, you know, uh, me and Chael's situation was a bit different, being the fact that, you know, we didn't really, we don't have a training history together, you know. I, I can imagine for these guys, having a training history together is, is ten times hard, you know. Um, you know, we're friends and stuff like that, but at the same time, had we spent the time training together, you know, going through those rough training sessions and, and, and the time you spend with a training partner and everything that goes into it, the decision to fight each other would have been hard because it was hard already for us to make the decision and we hadn't really had that time training together. All right. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a question for George in English for the benefit of all the people here. Um, there's been many talk, George, about you moving up. I know you're focused on Johnny and Saturday night, but I'm going to ask you still. Um, but what about moving down in weight and making lightweight? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, it would be really hard to do. Uh, I don't say it's impossible, but I haven't considered it yet. It, it, it put a lot of things in perspective. And I'm going to say the same thing I've been saying for five years. I'm focusing on Johnny and Drix right now. I'm not uh, thinking about that right now. And when it's, if it happened, when it happened, uh, people, Dana will, find, will, will know before my attention, before then the reporter. It will, you know, will let the UFC promoting it the, the, the way it should, it should but, be promoted. But, but right now I'm not thinking about that. Do you think it'd be more easy to go down and up? I'm not as a, I'm not very big welterweight. I'm a, I would say medium sized welterweight. Uh, it depends the situation. I, I, I don't know. It could be maybe easier going down than going up. But the thing is, I would have to do a diet. It would, uh, I don't know. I would have to talk to a specialist, you know, because I'm a guy that walk around always the same weight. Uh, I don't get fat between fight. I'm always training and always in shape. Um, that's the way I am. I, I can drink and do everything, eat whatever I want, and I'm still the same weight. You know, I'm genetically, I'm like that. My sister, my family is like that. They don't even do sport, but they're fit. You know, so it's that's the way we are in my family. And, and uh, but I don't know. I would have to talk to someone, and see what is the easier for me, what would be the the smartest move to do if I want to do it. 
And Mr. White, maybe one for you. Um, it, it's the 20th anniversary of the UFC, but it also marks 10th anniversary of GSP's first fight in the UFC. Do you remember um, his first fight, or do you remember the first time you saw him? Uh, do you have an anecdote on that or something? People always ask me when we have a champion, do, they, do, do I remember the first time that I ever saw him? And, and I don't. I, I remember the first time I saw them beat somebody that mattered. You know what I mean? That's, that's usually what I remember. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, you know, I think George St. Pierre, you know, he was on this tear. He, he was this, this talented, well-rounded guy at the time. And I think when, when George St. Pierre really exploded, uh, not only, you know, in the UFC, but with fans and started to resonate was when he asked for that title shot. When he said, I want the UFC, please give me that belt. I want it so bad. You know, when that whole thing went down, that was when everybody started to, to know who George St. Pierre was. Hi, I'm back. I have a couple of questions for the flyweights. I'd like to start with Tim Elliott over there. This is the first time that you'll be on a main card for a pay-per-view event, and you get to do it coinciding with the 20th anniversary. I'm just curious how you feel about being a part of the main card on the pay-per-view. I was hoping to get out of here without having to talk, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think they start out with the 25-pounders for a reason. Uh, we're very exciting, and uh, I think Ali has a lot of power, and uh, I have a lot of awkward movements, so I think we're going to set the card off right. And for Ali, uh, you have a really quick turnaround here. You just came off of an amazing debut. What is your feeling coming into this fight, and how much do you want to impress the way that you did in the last fight that you had on this card? У тебя был очень очень крутой дебют. Ты на самом деле всех очень удивил. Как ты собираешься сейчас удивить публику? Я сейчас ничего не могу сказать. Все будет видно в субботу, 16 ноября. Вот как Всевышний распорядится, так и все и будет. Так хочу пожелать удачи Тим Элиот. He says he doesn't really want to predict what's going to happen because he, he really doesn't know. Um, but it's, it's, it's God's will. He definitely wants to wish Tim Elliott a lot of luck because he thinks that he will totally need it. <laughs> what are you, and drunk? Just a last question for uh, T. Wood here. You'd, how important is it for you to go up against a guy that's an MMA veteran like Josh Koscheck and to really make an impact also for yourself in this fight? Um, if you look at this table, you know, you look at me and probably two other guys on this table, most of these guys have already built their reputation. These guys have went out there and they beat the top guys. The way Koshek became Koshek, he went out there and beat somebody and meant something. And for me, I'm looking to go out there and fight him. And, you know, everybody's sitting here and said, I won't fight this guy, I won't fight this guy. I'm just going to put it out there, you know. I'm 31 years old. Um, I'm not young in age. I'm young in the sport. Um, I do want to fight for the title. I do want to fight for the belt. And um, this guy, my last opponent, the opponents before, these guys have all been in that picture. So... I haven't asked for the easy fights. I haven't went out there and just wanted to fight these guys that are, you know, not, not making noise. I've asked these guys to fight tough guys because I want to one day have that belt that George St. Fair has in front of him, you know, and, and Roy's like, I want to fight him, you know. If he doesn't want to fight him, he needs to get out of the way, you know. Guys like me will fight him. Guys like, you know, Johnny will fight him. And I think that this is a sport where you're only as good as your last performance, and it's my job this Saturday to go out there, fight with everything I got against a very tough guy that's always brought it, and, you know, I've watched this guy, you know, on the Ultimate Fighter show, and I watched Rashad, and I watched Chill. All these guys have grown up. We've known each other in the wrestling community, but I'm, the, like, the young one that's coming through, and it's my job to go out there and send a message. We're going to take one more question. One more question. Right here. Go ahead. Get him a mic. You got a mic? Relax, crazy pants. We'll get you a mic here. Hold on. <laughs> Ariel, Mike Hogg, hand over your mic. I was mic. gonna ask the question, but I guess one more. Here. I'll be a team player and keep Gareth. Let's hear the great question. Two mics. Last question goes to uh, the man who fell asleep on the dais, Chael Sonnen. Um, we're celebrating 20 years of the UFC this week. It's come an amazing way. It is now sports, and it is moving into the mainstream. Um, if Dana, you'd like to answer this afterwards as well, I'm going to ask Chael this question. Sure, Chael will answer just fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, can this really become the biggest sport in the world? 
I hear that talk all the time, and, and statistics are a very interesting thing. I studied them in college, and they're very complicated. But I would tell you this. If you took the two greatest soccer teams in the world, and I don't know who they are, but if you took them and you put them in a venue in my hometown, nobody's coming to watch. If you took the 10 guys on this stage and our president to any venue in the world, whether it's China, our partners in Abu Dhabi, Mexico, where we're going next year, Singapore, where we'll be on January 3rd, Russia, which is being vetted right now, Germany, Ireland, the UK, which we just played, we could sell out any venue in the world with the talent that you're looking at right now. So when I hear that the UFC isn't the biggest sport in the world, I think it's very controversial on what statistics you're looking at. Pow! Thank you all very much for coming today. We appreciate it. We'll see you at the weigh-ins on Friday.